Good morning. Welcome to worship on this 4th of July weekend. Uh, my name is Pastor David Hara, and I'm a guest pastor. Um, I'm the founding pastor of Family Christ Lutheran Church and School up in North Tampa, New Tampa area. But also, I'm a chaplain at Concordia Village, Tampa. So, and I'm semi-retired, so I told Pastor Yoakum I'm able to come in and help whenever you want. So you line me up today. So it's great to be with all of you here this beautiful Fourth of July Sunday morning weekend. So let everybody let's stand for our opening. the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ, and saying, God be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins, as a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority. I therefore forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and 
and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love, according to your abundant mercy. Blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you only, have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight, so that you may be justified in your words and blameless in your judgment. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, you delight in the truth and the inward of me, and you teach me wisdom in the secret heart. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have broken rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my enemies. Create in me a clean heart of God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and I will be the willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners will return to you. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen.
today's Old Testament reading is from the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 17. Then Saul clothed David with his armor, and he put a helmet of bronze on his head and clothed him with a coat of mail. And David strapped his sword over his armor, and he tried in vain to go, for he had not tested them. Then David said to Saul, I cannot go with these, for I have not tested them. So David put them off. Then David took his staff in his hand and chose five smooth stones from the brook and put them in his shepherd's pouch. His sling was in his hand, and he approached the Philistine. And the Philistine moved toward and came near to David with his shield bearer in front of him. And when the Philistine looked and saw David, he disdained him, for he was but a youth, ruddy and handsome in appearance. And the Philistine said to David, Am I a dog that you come to me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. Then the Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give your flesh to the birds of the air and to the beasts of the field. And David said to the Philistine, you come to me with a sword and a spear and a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hand, and I will strike you down and cut off your head. I will give the dead bodies of the host of the Philistines this day to the birds of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel, and that all this assembly may know that the Lord saves not with sword or spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hand. When the Philistine rose, he came and drew near to meet David, and David ran quickly to the battle line to meet the Philistine. And David put his hand in his bag and took out a stone and slung it and struck the Philistine on his forehead. The stone sank into his forehead, and he fell on his face to the ground. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone, and struck the Philistine and killed him. There was no sword in the hand of David. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading is from Galatians chapter 6. Brothers, if anyone is caught in any transgression, you who are spiritual should restore him in a spirit of gentleness. Keep watch on yourselves, lest you too be tempted. Bear one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if anyone thinks he is something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. But let each one test his own work, and then his reason to boast will be in himself alone and not in his neighbor. For each will have to bear his own load. One who is taught the word must share all good things with the one who teaches. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever one sows, that will he also reap. For the one who sows to his own flesh will from his flesh reach corruption, reap corruption. But the one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. And let us not grow weary in doing good. For in due season we will reap if we do not give up. So then, as we have opportunity, let us do good to everyone, and especially to those who are of the household of faith. But far be it from me to boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. For neither circumcision counts for anything nor uncircumcision, but a new creation. And as for all who walk by this rule, peace and mercy be upon them and upon the Israel of God. From now on, let no one cause me trouble, for I bear on my body the marks of Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit, brothers. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. Jesus is the Christ. 
mercy and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Would you pray? Lord Jesus, you know us. You know the struggles we face. And sometimes the struggles we face look impossible. Remind us always in life. We face things that are impossible. You bless us. You help us. And you make the impossible happen. For all things are possible with you. And we thank you. May we look to David's battle with Goliath and see our battles. But even more to see you by our side today and forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, good morning. It's good to be here. Um, so I uh, sort of nice seeing some different faces in church and I think all you know I've seen Kathy before but that's that's I probably that's the only person person here that I have familiar with any little bit because I haven't seen Kathy for quite a while pre-COVID in fact you know it's been a long time so and it's good to be out out and about now with this do you know this this passage I'm going to talk about that Old Testament reading and just thinking about this battle between David and Goliath. It's, it's really one of the more famous passages of the Old Testament. And, and it's a, a great underdog story. You know, there's a lot of underdog stories, you know, where you like, you root, people root for the underdog. And Goliath was this giant of a man about nine feet tall, all muscle. And he was trying to, he was taunting, the defying the armies day after day, saying, you know what, rather than fight, why don't you send your champion against me? Whoever wins that battle will win the war. And nobody would step forward. Everybody looked at him and said, I want nothing with him. I don't want, I don't want anything to do with Goliath. And Goliath is synonymous. Do you know anything that, and actually biology, they name it. When you name something Goliath, that means it's the biggest in its species. There's a Goliath frog, and it's about this long. <coughs> Could you imagine that? You know, the frog legs off that Goliath frog are bigger than chicken legs. <laughs> There's a fish known as a Goliath grouper. Any fishermen here? Have you ever seen a Goliath grouper? And they can go eight, nine hundred, even a thousand pounds. Did you catch one? A little one, a little one. A little one. That full grown. Could you, could you imagine a 900 pound Goliath grouper reeling that in? That's a lot of grouper sandwiches, right? I mean, that's 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 enough to feed, you know, a lot of people. A 900 pound Goliath grouper, and it's just amazing to think about that. But this whole chapter of um, 1 Samuel, where it talks about the battle, and they're off away, Saul is with us, and David's three oldest brothers. It's interesting, David is the youngest of eight boys, and you know what, his older brothers have a little bit of a resentment, saying, ah, why did you come here just to watch the battle, and you know, they did that. You know, it reminded me when I read the chapter, it was a little bit like Joseph. He was the youngest, you know, of 12. And, you know, the older brothers had something against him. But David there, he goes and he's bringing cheese and bread to his brothers and to the general and, you know, trying to go and, 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 and doing this. And, do you know, David hears Goliath taunting the Israelites. And he looks at all the army and they said, I don't want anything to do with him. But David said, you know what? I'll go. Do you know the one thing is David had been a shepherd. He was watching his father's sheep back home, Bethlehem, and he's watching his father's sheep. And you know what he said? You know what? I've had to face bear and lions, and I fought them. And he looked back at that. Do you know when I was reading that? I remember. One of the scariest moments I've ever been in my whole life. I think I was 16. I was up at my grandmother's house in northern Michigan. I went fly fishing. You know, I was on the Silver River. And I remember driving there alone. And you got off where the river went under the road, the county road. 
and you're working my way upstream and you're rounding the corners and fly fishing. It's sort of amazing when the fish jump out of the water grabbing the fly. And I remember going around a corner and they're drinking water about 10, 15 feet away from me was a bear. For a city, I was a city boy then. And city boys don't like bears. <laughs> I slowly backed away. So I got about 200 feet away. And then I hightailed it a mile down river. <laughs> and you know what? I, you know, that's my reaction. But you know what? If you're a shepherd and your job is to protect the sheep, you've got to do something about that bear. And David had. He remembered his past and his experiences and facing things that were terrifying. And you know what he thought? You know what? God was with me all those times. And you know, the other thing in this whole chapter, you read the whole chapter through in every place. Do you know Goliath is this huge, gigantic guy? And when David looks at the situation, you know how many times he mentions Goliath? Twice. Do you know how many times he mentions God? Nine times. Where's David's mind before all of this? Do you know if you've got a big problem, and if you've got, and all of us have problems and struggles, things we're afraid of, do you know what? The more you bring God into the equation, the better off you're going to be because who's bigger than your problem? God is. Do you know that I've, I've heard this statement sometimes, it's not biblical, and but did you know sometimes, have you ever heard the statement, God never gives us more than we can handle? It never says that in the Bible. <laughs> it never says that. But God never gives us more than we can handle with his help. Sometimes when we get more than we can handle, what do we have to do? We have to say, Lord, I need help. I need you. And you know, that was David's perspective when he was getting ready to face Goliath he said you know what with God all things are possible and that's what Jesus told his disciples when your problem is bigger than your abilities look to and ask for God's help and his blessings so he volunteered. David put his hands up. I'll, I'll take on this guy. Um, and that's one of the bigger challenges. Have you ever asked, you know, for volunteers? Yeah. And some things, oh, I'll do that. But, you know, some things, I don't want any part of that. The soldiers didn't want any part of this. But David said, I'll do it. And Saul said, all right, I'll give you my very own armor. And he goes and puts on the armor, and David's moving around. And I've never put armor on, but I've heard, I know in the Middle Ages, um, it, it got big and bulky. And, you know, sort of those knights of the Middle Ages, if you came to the side, you knocked them over, and they, they fell down, they're like a turtle on their back. They're, you know, I can't get up, I can't get up. It's, you know, it, it protected you from arrows, but, you know, you can't really move that fast. So David said, I can't wear it. He said. So what did David do? He went and got five smooth stones. Five. He didn't get one. You know, he got five. And I remember as a kid trying to do this, making a sling, it's a little pouch and two strings, and you can spin it like this, and you have one strap, you and you release it. And you know, let me tell you, you can throw a rock at about 130, 40 miles an hour. But you know what? At first, when you try to do it, it's hard hitting the broad, broad side of a barn. And that's a target 50 feet wide. You know, as you do it a little more, you get a little bit better. You have the timing going on, and you can do it. And you can hit a 10-foot wall. But hitting a forehead is a small target. And David took five stones. But David went into that battle. Stone. He 
slew Goliath. And, and became the most famous man in all of Israel. Even a way more famous than the king. They started singing songs about him. He was the hero of all heroes. And you know what? You know, we, we do that. You know, we're, we're in the 4th of July weekend. We're celebrating. You know, we sort of remember American heroes, you know. And so a lot of, you know, really in the country's history, a lot of our presidents have been generals, you know. Sort of that's a big common denominator, you know, in being heroes. But David did this. And he was incredibly famous. You know, I remember I went to seminary back in the 1980s, a long time ago. And I remember when I was in seminary in the 1980s, they made a movie about David. And you know who the star of it was? Richard Gere, who was sort of like the male sex symbol of the 1980s. Um, you know, they made a movie about David back in the 50s. And do you know who played King David then back in the 50s, one of the biggest stars of the 50s, Gregory Peck. And you know, David has that, that, that you know, that star quality, just his, his life and everything about him. Probably the most famous statue of all time is, you know what, the statue of David. Michelangelo, his David statue is the most valuable statue there ever was. And David, you know one of the things the scriptures say about David? He was a man after God's own heart. He was a great musician. He played the lyre. So when Saul was having problems, he said, you know, I, I need music. Music can lift your soul. David was the musician who came in for Saul. David was an incredible writer. Of the 150 Psalms in the book of Psalms, David's name is at the top of 73 of the Psalms. And maybe the most famous Psalm that there is, what? The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He makes me walk in righteous paths for his namesake. And even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. And you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Do you know, I love that psalm, the 23rd psalm. Do you know, it talks about what David knew. He was a shepherd. He talks about that, you know, and I, you know, I fought bears. And fighting Goliath is sort of like walking through the valley of the shadow of death with everybody watching and stepping up and going to Goliath, I'm here for you. And you know, in the passage, Goliath said, why do you send me kid with that, you know, sticks? And it's incredibly powerful. Do you know what? When I'm thinking about this, this is probably the biggest moment, the biggest miraculous heroic moment of David's life. It changed it forever. Do you know what, what are your greatest moments of life? The moments that stand out and say, wow, that was an incredible day. You know, I, was, I had a group, group, one of the top five two weeks ago because I got to marry my daughter. And, you know, it's sort of a special for a dad. You, you know, dads usually walk their daughters down the aisle, but I got to walk her down the aisle and then spin around and do the wedding, too. Kevin, you can do that in a few years, right? No? <laughs> All right. So, do you know, I teased my daughter when, when we were talking about the wedding. I said, Grace, I want to walk you down the aisle. Then I want to spin around 
and say, who gives this woman into holy matrimony? And I spin back around and I say, her mother and I do. And then I spin back around again. And my daughter looked at me and said, no. <laughs> That's an incredible day, a day of blessings. Do you know? I think there's a part of us that wish that life would always be like these moments when giants are slain, problems are vanquished, and good and God always prevails in the world around us. But it's not always like that day. You know, at the Bible study before our service at 9 o'clock, I did sort of, you know, David's life, his high point is this battle of Goliath. But I did his low point. The sin he committed with Bathsheba. Where he had the affair with Bathsheba, and then she became pregnant. So what did he do? He figured out a way to get rid of her husband. And what did God do? Nobody really knew what he did, but God sent Nathan the prophet and came knocking on David's door and said, we got some, some terrible evil in the kingdom. David said, what? And Nathan pointed out, it's you. Do you know the one thing is the illustration of thinking God was a man, David was a man after God's own heart. God gave him incredible blessings. But the danger was when, you know what, if, if everything is given to you, and you know what, it, it went to David's head. He became too full of himself. You know, it made me think of this passage. Um, remember the Apostle Paul. He had seen amazing things happen. He had raised some people from the dead. He had healed people. Amazing things happened. Churches growing, all sorts of things. Amazing escapes from city. But what happened with Paul? He had this thorn in the flesh. This is what Paul writes in 2 Corinthians chapter 12. To keep me from becoming conceited because of these surpassingly great revelations, there was given me a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me. Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is is made perfect in weakness. Paul was reminded. He wanted to get rid of this problem, but God said, no. I want you to rely upon me and know that grace is the most important. And you know what? That's what God wants us to do. When I think about the account of David, and you know, I, it's a great, great event. Make movies about it. Hollywood does. But God wants us to know, and there's the warning, when everything is going great, keep going back to God, his grace. Because that's where you share the blessing. You know, one of my favorite stories about football, and it was back at Super Bowl a long time ago, I think in the, in the 20s numbers. Do you remember Buffalo went to the Super Bowl four years in a row, right? And they lost all four. Anybody from Buffalo? Nobody wants to admit it. <laughs> but you know, they lost, they lost four Super Bowls in a row. And the fourth Super Bowl, their star running back was Thurman Thomas. And Thurman Thomas had a terrible game that fourth Super Bowl. You know how many times he fumbled? Three times. And it really cost his team the game because every time they'd get going, he would fumble. He was their star player. And you know what? He took it rather personally. To lose four straight Super Bowls, nobody's ever done that. And then he played the worst game ever in that fourth Super Bowl, fumbling and losing the ball three times. He was at the end of the game. The celebrations were going on with the Cowboys. Thurman Thomas was basically sitting on his own bench just in tears. Devastating. On the other sideline for the Cowboys, the Dallas Cowboys, 
their star running back, Emmett Smith, was Super Bowl MVP. And he had, I think, a godchild of his in his arms. They were walking around, the confetti's flying, all the team, all their, all their celebrating. But Emmett Smith walked over and saw Thurman Thomas on the other sideline, just basically unconsolable. And he walked over with that little kid in his arms and went up to Thurman Thomas and told the child, I want to introduce you to the greatest running back in the history of the NFL, Mr. Thurman Thomas. And Thurman Thomas looked up, sort of amazed. After that game, you don't want to, nobody would call him the greatest running back in the NFL. But Emmett Smith did. They got up and they hugged. And you know, that's a great lesson. When you're at the peak of success with everything, look at those who are at the worst moment. And then, you know, that could be me too. That's Jesus. Who being the Son of God, didn't think equality was God was something to be grasped, but made himself nothing. Took on human flesh and became one of us. And he went to the depths. He went to the cross. And so he has a name greater than all names. Look to him, trust in him, now and forevermore. Amen. Let's rise above the Lord with our prayer. O Lord of the harvest, at your son's instruction we pray that you would continue to send laborers into your vineyard that the plentiful harvest may be gathered into the peace of your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Merciful Lord, grant our homes to be places in which your peace dwells, that husbands and wives love and honor one another. Children are nurtured in fear and faith towards your name, and your kingdom comes among us, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O Lord, give peace, we pray, to all nations, that all people may enjoy the comforting goodness of your will. Being done on earth. Hear our prayers on behalf of all who make, administer, and judge your laws, and provide opportunities for your gospel to be proclaimed without hindrance. Lord, in your mercy. God of all compassion, look with mercy upon all of your people, and especially Pat Lewis. We pray for her and all for whom we pray. According to your gracious will, restore these servants in strength to, with strength and healing. Now and grant them patience to await the resurrection on the last day. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. How awesome are your deeds, O Lord. You have planted us and directed us to pray that you would send workers into your victory. You have answered you that prayer through your Son and his church. As your kingdom draws near each day, teach us to boast only in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, rejoicing that our names are written in heaven through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. We get our offerings for our...
the celebration of Holy Communion. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your heart. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should, at all times and in all places, give thanks to you, O Lord. Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God, through the countless blessings you have so freely bestowed on us and all creation, above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally, because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity. And all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, the angels and archangels and with the whole company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying. are you, O Lord, our God, King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. In your righteous judgment, you condemned the sin of Adam and the weight of forbidden fruit, and you justly barred them and all their children from the tree of life. Yet in your great mercy, you promised salvation by a second end, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and made his cross a life-giving tree for all who trust in him. We give you thanks for the redemption you prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Grant us your Holy Spirit, that we may faithfully eat and drink of the fruits of his cross and receive the blessings of forgiveness, life, and salvation that come to us in his body and blood. Hear us as we pray in his name, and as he taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he gave him thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Peace of the Lord be with you all.
And now the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, drag me and preserve you, keep you steadfast. It's a life everlasting. Go in peace.
thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith towards you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Please be seated for our closing hymn. Thank you. 
God's blessings to everybody here and have a great 4th of July weekend and it has been great to be with you on this Sunday morning so and this weekend so pray for Pastor Yoakum they're doing up you the committing the ground so as parents so that's you know something I haven't had to do yet my parents say you know actually where I you know where I ran from the bear that's where they want their ashes to be placed and they said, <laughs> so so when I go back up to northern Michigan, I haven't been up there since my two grandmothers died who were up there. So but emotional time. So pray for Pastor Bill. Bless him. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Well, aren't you a sweetheart? <laughs> 